ating abuti ng pangarap Good morning, everyone. So welcome po sa ating webinar on resource efficient and cleaner production. So again, I am Rose Bonto from the Technological Services Division of DOST ITDI. So ilang-ilang webinar na rin po oh, ang nagkakasama tayo. Ano? Okay, so I hope that you are all staying healthy and safe, especially those who are in Metro Manila dahil ECQ na naman po tayo. Ano po? Okay, so yung mga nasa bahay po na naka-work from home today so at naka-lockdown sa kanilang mga bahay, so let us stay productive even while at home and for our essential workers and for our um, yung mga skeleton workforce po natin sa ating mga uh, opisina, so mag-ingat po tayo sa pagpasok at pag-uwi mamaya. Ayan, so thank you very much once again for joining us today. So for our webinar rules, simple lamang po. So check your speakers and internet connection. So stay engaged po. Listen carefully and be attentive. So we are live in YouTube today. So just in case po na magkaroon kayo ng mga internet problems, okay, just uh, reload lang po. Ano, and this will be aired naman po for 48 hours. So use the chat box if you have any questions or comments. So this will be our communication tool. And the speaker will answer the questions at the end of the session. So uh, prepare to take notes din po dahil uh, maganda itong topic natin today. This is our director, Dr. Annabel Vibriones. So she is a scientist one. And our institute is the Industrial Technology Development Institute. We are under the DOST or Department of Science and Technology. So to, more, uh, to know more about our institute, uh, I would like to invite you to watch this video. Tracing its roots back in 1901 from the then Bureau of Government Laboratories, which became the Bureau of Science, the Department of Science and Technology, Industrial Technology Development Institute, or DOST ITDI, turned 119 years old on July 1, 2020. From basic researches to mapping of the country's flora and fauna and other local resources for scientific studies, DOST ITDI has been a vital instrument in establishing the research and development agenda in the country. It was 1958 when the Bureau of Science became the National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST, that industrial R&D started gaining ground while harnessing local resources and skills towards self-sufficiency and optimized productivity. Industrial R&D went full gear in 1987 when the NIST was renamed Industrial Technology Development Institute, focusing on four major functions, research and development, technical services, technology transfer, and custodian of the national units of measure to provide international traceability. DOST ITDI research and development covers five major areas, food, environment and biotechnology, chemicals and energy, material science, and packaging technology. all aimed at supporting and answering the needs of local industries. Complementing its R&D are its technical services, standards and testing, national metrology, and technology transfer, aimed at harnessing local industries' productivity and competitiveness, and translation of developed knowledge or innovation into the production sector, paving the way for new businesses or startups. As well, DOST ITDI innovations serve as springboards for businesses to thrive and prosper. In support of the administration's thrust in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST interventions are anchored on the theme, Aghama Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at Kinabukasan. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and when most of the country was in enhanced community quarantine, 
DOST ITDI bravely rose to the call of duty, distributed ready-to-eat foods such as the Pack of Hope and Mung Bean Cocoa Milk Drink to our frontliners in Metro Manila and other regions in the country. Produced face shields via 3D printing and donated these to hospital frontliners. Developing prototypes and 3D printing critically important parts of hospital equipment and improved design of N95 masks to better protect the frontliners. The Institute is also providing interventions for our displaced countrymen who lost their jobs and livelihood by making training available online whenever necessary. And even before this pandemic, DOSD ITDI innovations were critical in rehabilitating communities that experience calamities and even war and make them whole again. DOSD ITDI has been preparing for an innovative ecosystem for new knowledge and technology to thrive and help make us ready for Industry 4.0. DOSD ITDI aims to achieve kaayusan and to certain the future or kinabukasan through its initiatives and help businesses and every Filipino adapt to COVID-19 under the new normal. State-of-the-art facilities are being established. Construction of the Simulation Packaging Testing Laboratory, SPTL, and Green Packaging Laboratory, GPL, is ongoing. At the SPTL, stress conditions that affect products during transport are simulated that can help mitigate losses during distribution. While produced, products can be processed and packed in a green packaging laboratory. AMSIN or the Advanced Manufacturing Center, DOST's 3D Printing Technology Center, is a joint project with Metals Industry Research and Development Center, MIRDC. ITDI focuses on developing multiple 3D printing materials from local materials to reduce costs. Halal Food Research and Development Facility With this facility in place, the Institute hopes to develop new food products that are compliant to halal standards and as well support DOST as it responds to Republic Act No. 10817 or the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Act. Enhancement of the competence and capabilities of the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines Expertise and facilities are being upgraded and construction of laboratory facilities for metrology and chemistry and biology are now ongoing. It is envisioned that the animal will provide the country with credible measurements and traceability in the fields of physical, chemical, and biological metrology. And with the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST response has been decisive. With the support of President Duterte and the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, the DOST will establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, or VIP, to be constructed at the new Clark Economic Zone in Capas, Tarla. The VIP shall be pursuing priority virology research and developing diagnostic kits, therapeutics, and vaccines for diseases caused by viruses, where DOST ITDI will have a critical function. From laying the groundworks for science and technology in the country, the Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology, through the years, which turned 119 last July, has been consistently providing innovations to industry to help make them competitive, emerging as a credible industry partner. The Institute has been instrumental as well in mitigating hazards improving the lives of disaster victims and communities to rise again. With so much optimism with this cooperation and bridging of talents and expertise, we look forward to enhance science, technology, innovation, competitiveness, and the emergence of new research and development capabilities that hopefully will translate into new products and services that meet the current future needs of our nation and the people. Alright, so ayan po ang aming agency. So you've seen our programs and different services. Okay, so I'm sharing now our uh, contact details po ng aming director so, uh, and also our website, so www.itdi.ust.gov.ph and the Technological Services Division. So if you have any technical concerns or uh, training inquiries, just email us lang po. And also kindly follow our Facebook page, DOST ITDI Updates and our YouTube channel. So subscribe lang po and hit the notification bell for our uh, videos and live feeds na magno-notify po sa inyo. 
All right. So, so let me introduce to you our resource speaker for today. So uh, our resource speaker is Engineer Reynaldo Esguera. So Engineer Esguera is a licensed chemical engineer with over 30 years of experience in industrial environmental management. That includes research and development on energy efficiency, pollution prevention and control, and water treatment, capability building, policy studies, design and evaluation of wastewater treatment facil facilities, water quality monitoring, preparation of environmental compliance documents, environmental technology verification, and environmental management systems. So he was previously the program coordinator for the Department of Science and Technology flagship program on the promotion of cleaner production technologies. This program and other projects that Engineer Esguera was involved accorded him the opportunity to interact and visit over 200 facilities nationwide. So he was prepared, uh, he has prepared several training modules and manuals on cleaner production and energy efficiency. He also served as the national focal person for the United Nations Industrial Development Organization project on the expansion and scaling up of the application of resource efficient and cleaner production in the ASEAN region. He was the program coordinator for the ITD IDOST Toxic Substances and Hazardous Waste Management Program as well. So his res responsibilities include the design and operation of a centralized hazardous waste handling facility for DOST waste, training on hazardous waste management and provision of technical services to industries. He represented DOST in many interagency technical working group on industrial environment management matters, including the Interagency Committee on Republic Act 6969 or the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Act of 1990. The Task Force on Former U.S. Bases Cleanup, National Solid Waste Management Commission, and the Integrated Persistent Organic Pollutants Project. His publications include the, the ITDI Pollution Prevention and Control Series for the following industries, fish processing, electroplating, Muscovado sugar milling, and a slaughterhouse. He was also the technical editor for the Philippine Handbook of Environmental Standards of the Development Bank of the Philippines. He is also the senior author of the guidelines on the use of alternative fuels and raw materials in cement kiln co-processing. So very recently, Engineer Esguera headed the multi-agency subgroup that drafted the Waste to Energy Guidelines for the National Solid Waste Management Commission. And he was also in charge with the drafting of the Guidelines for Waste Analysis and Characterization Study, or WACS, that is now up and being used by different LGUs in conducting their WACS as part of the requirement in rep preparation of their 10-year Solid Waste Management Plan as mandated by law. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very own Chief Science Research Specialist from the Environment and Biotechnology Division of the OSC ITDI, so Engineer Reynaldo Esguera. Engineer Ray. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone. Na imbag na bigat, especially to my good friend from uh, La Union na dati nasa Ilocos na offense, Sir Jones. Uh, maayong aga naman sa mga taga Region 6, maayong buntag sa mga Bisayas and Mindanao, except for Sambuanga dahil uh, Buenos Dias ang ating ibabati sa kanila. And then from Bicol, uh, Makay na aga. And of course, sa mga katagalugan, Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning, everyone. So, as I was listening to the expectations ng sabi nila, of course, we do have a lot of uh, students and then we do have a lot of professionals sa academy. So, minsan nahirapan ako magbalansi dito kasi meron tayong tinatawag na academic learners saka yung uh, adult learners. So, yung adult learners kasi ang gusto natin, whatever we learn, if immediately we could apply in our life. Like, uh, meron isa yung, dahil siya raw yung in-charge sa solid waste management nila sa school. So, siguro dapat yung madampot niya rito, magamit niya sa, sa school. So, I'll be providing those principles dito. Not necessarily ito yung mga examples ko, but look behind the principles what, of what I'll be sharing. For the academic learners naman, 
Siyempre, hindi tayo graduate pag hindi tayo pumasa kahit isang subject. Kahit PE siguro yung subject natin, pag hindi natin ipinasa yung PE, we may not be able to graduate. However, I'll also take down the level of the discussions na ma-relate natin na pwede nyo gawin even sa houses nito. Although, what I'm discussing now, the title is Implementing Firm Level Recipe, and call it Recipe for short, Approaches for Philippine Enterprises. Kahit for Philippine Enterprises, so later on you'll find out that you could do this for your household. So, we'll be discussing just four items over the next uh, hour and a half. So, we'll talk about ano ba yung recipe or resource efficient and cleaner production. Then we'd look at yung sinasabi kong waste management hierarchy. So how do we approach, how do we implement resource efficient and cleaner production or recipe following the waste management hierarchy? And eventually, how do we make this thing sustainable through the implementation of what we call a recipe program? And I'll share with you our experience on how companies all over the country were able not to only to solve their environmental problems, their waste and their pollution, but also save money or increase their productivity in the long run. So, so nasabi ko nga, we'll look at pollution. So pollution is anything that would harm human health, the environment, and the, whatever we take out from the environment. Iba, kailangan natin ng tubig galing sa environment, but however, if we throw polluted wastewater into the rivers, then we deteriorate that resource. At paano ba ina-address dati? And still now applicable. How are these pollutants being addressed? So hypothetically, let's imagine meron kang planta. Yung planta mo may air pollution. And then that air pollution, kasi you have to follow regulations. You have to follow the Clean Air Act. So you set up your air pollution control device. Now for this discussion, sabihin lang natin, you're going to use a wet scrubber. So si wet scrubber, it's water coming counter current doon sa air pollution mo so that the air that you are emitting sa environment ay lumines. Kaso ano nangyari? What could happen now is the pollutant ay nag-transfer sa tubig mo. So... Susundin mo naman ngayon yung Clean Water Act. So you build your waste treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. Maybe you add some chemicals so that the water could now be discharged complying with the Clean Water Act into your receiving body of water. Kaso with the addition of chemicals, there's that potential of you generating your sludge. At yung sludge na yon, comply with RA6969 or RA9003. By the way, yung mga batas, minimension ko yung numbers, if you could take note of them and then i-google nyo na lang kung ano ba yun. But RA6969 is on Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Act and 9003 is on Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. Now, ngayon, pag umulan, and uh, kahit pristine yung ulan natin, it could still be acidic. If we have time later, I'll explain bakit acidic kahit malinis yung ulan natin. But uh, for guessing purposes, isipin nyo lang, ano kaya yung sinasabi kong acidic yung ulan? Ano kaya yung pH niya? So, and we know that if something is acidic, that could be a very good agent for leaching your pollutant. Di ba pag naglilinis ka ng bakit mo, anong ginagamit nyo? Muriatic acid. So yung practically cleaning your bathroom, taking away any dirt, any contaminant, any, any soil there by using muriatic acid. So that's practically leaching it out. And doing that, this could contaminate your groundwater. At tapos ipinam up natin yung tubig at ngayon iniinom na ngayon ng babaeng may Adam's apple yung tubig. And what has happened? You spend a lot in terms of air pollution control device, wastewater treatment plant, your landfill, and even your water, your chemicals, but still the danger of your pollutant entering the environment, the groundwater in this case, and entering the body of people is still very much present. So now we look at pollution, which is, which is actually a waste. 
And sabi ni Toyota, well, from the business standpoint, ang tinitingnan natin lagi sa business yung value, not the waste. Ano ang nagpo-provide ng value? And from Toyota, by the way, in my presentation, I might be mentioning a lot of commercial items, mga brand names. Please, don't mind them. Hindi ko po sila in-endorse, but it's just being used to for us to be able to relate to the subject matter. So sabi ni Toyota, yung value is those activities that the customer is willing to pay for when you buy your product. And ang waste is everything na hindi willing yung customer to pay for that becomes waste. Di ba? Pag bumili ka ng kotse, may radio, may stereo, may car stereo yun. Pero the customers are willing to, to pay for the car stereo because they would want to listen to maybe the music, traffic updates, and others. In fact, they've uh, modified the car stereo to include a USB port para, or uh, an auxiliary port para kung gusto mo yung cellphone naman yung gamitin mo, you could use that. However, let's say yung kotse ay dagdagan mo ng lima pang salamin, mirrors, na wala namang silbi, then customers would not be willing to pay for that. And further, again, from, from Toyota, sabi nila, what is waste? It's that anything other than the minimum amount of these things na nakasulat dyan. By the way, I won't be reading my slides. I just want you to look at them, maybe uh, para hindi tayo masyado masayangan oras. But those things which are absolutely essential to add value to a product. So for those who are in the manufacturing side dito, Kung mata, madami kayong naka-stock na packaging materials, kaso hindi nyo naman na ibebenta pa yung product nyo, nakatambak lang yung packaging materials nyo. And then, that's already materials that's being wasted and the space na kinakain nun sa facility nyo. And that becomes some waste. So, Toyota further identified, nung una seven lang to, eh. hindi pa kasama yung unused talent. So these are how Toyota production system defines waste. Yung, for those who might not be speaking Japanese, yung muda po, that's waste. So that's, those are the defects, overproduction, waiting, transportation, inventory, motion, and extra processing. Yung motion parang, halimbawa, nag-print nag ka, tapos yung printer malayo sa'yo, tapos maglalakad ka pa papunta doon sa printer. So that's actually you're wasting some time pagpunta mo pa lang sa printer. Now, on the unused talent, ang isa namang problema dito is, let's say, yung isa supervisor na, tapos yung supervisor, siya pa yung bibili, let's say, ng bond paper sa, sa bookstore. May parang sayang naman yung i, binabayad mo dun sa supervisor, tapos bibili lang pala siya ng papel. That's unused talent. However, on the positive note, a lot of our workers have very great ideas on improving the production system. And later on, I'll share with you some of our experiences on that. So now, given those things, we now look at ano ba itong recipe, resource efficient and cleaner production. So just reading through what's the definition according to UNEP, ang sabi dun sa nakapula, it reduces risk to humans and the environment. Diba it's the same thing if you recall ang ating multimedia transfer of pollution or yung kanina yung may babae may Adam's apple. That's reducing risk to humans and the environment. Kaso medyo magastos yun. Recipe looks at increasing the eco-efficiency. And it's applicable to processes, products, and services. So before I explain these things, let's just look at some of the things na applicable sa processes by looking at conservation of uh, resources, eliminating maybe toxic components of your products, and reducing the quantity of waste and the toxicity of waste that we generate. Applicable din to sa products mismo, if the products has a longer life, safer to use, at eventually in the long run, ay yung pag tinatawag natin life cycle, na konti yung resources mo in-extract sa ating earth at konti rin yung waste na tinatapon mo sa earth. 
Well, eventually, that's what we call the circular economy. Also, for product services systems, ito, ginagawa na, imagine nyo, uh, you have containers of chemicals. Ang, pag naubos yung container ng chemical, the container itself is hazardous waste. So you have to pay a lot there. So why not? Di ba pwede i-refill mo yung container if it's not contaminated? A company, again, no, no endorsement. Merck has this system, what we call uh, retro logistics. Meaning, babalik mo sa kanila yung lalagyan nila, tapos i-fill up nila yun. Para you don't, buy, you don't pay for the container and you don't dispose of it and pay for it as hazardous waste. And uh, finally, it's applicable sa services. It's just like shifting from yung sa hotels, shifting from disposables and smaller tingi-tingi. -ting the hotel, uh, well, prior to the pandemic, I've seen a lot of hotels shifting to these refillable containers. Tapos meron pa nga sa hotels, di ba? If you want your towels changed, you, you put it on the floor. If you don't want, hang it on the rack. Pero hindi ba, matanong ko lang po kayo, although hindi ko makikita yung sagot ninyo. Ilang araw bago ninyo palitan ang towels na ginagamit ninyo? Isang linggo? Isang buwan? Di ba, hindi naman araw-araw yung towel mo ay palalaban mo agad. So, similarly, in staying in a hotel, let's say you're staying there for for two weeks, bakit kailangan mong papalitan yung towel mo araw-araw? So, pwede well, sabihin mo, bayad na yun. Well, I guess we also have to take into consideration the concept na kahit bayad mo na yun, we still are responsible in saving Mother Earth. So now, let's simplify things. Paano ba tong recipe na to? So, so tingnan natin. Kung if you're using 100 units of raw materials to produce 80 units of products, how much waste would you get? But 100 minus 80 is equal to 20. So yung una nating example kanina, yung may babaeng may Adam's apple, you treat eventually the 20. In recipe, you look at what is happening inside your manufacturing facility and make ways so that the 20 gets reduced. Mabawasan yung lumalabas na 20. So let's say, for just for this example, the 20 becomes 10. May ginawa ka, nag-revise, uh, nag nag-ayos ka ng production system mo, nag-repiping ka or whatever, and you were able to reduce that to 10. So what happens now is, kung 100 pa rin yung raw materials mo, and, eight, and 10 na lang yung waste mo, your finished products, in this case, is 90. So, nag-increase na yung productivity mo. Or, if we go back to having to produce 80, your raw materials this time would be just 90. So, from that alone, not only do you reduce the raw materials you're using, you could also increase the products you're producing. Plus, if you have to treat the waste that you generate, then mas konti na yung expenses mo. So that's the simple concept of what recipe is. <clears throat> Excuse me po. Ngayon lang sa tabi. Hindi ko kayo tatantanan dito sa mga susunod na discussions. Okay, so nabanggit ko na yan yung, yung tatlong kulay pula na bullets doon. And then the other benefits we could get out of this would be environmental benefits. Imagine if that's water that you were able to reduce and extract from the earth. That's the equivalent amount of water you, or wastewater that you won't be throwing out. If you change the materials to non-toxic, then you expose your workers to less dangers. And eventually, your risk towards non-compliance is reduced. And foggy points, if you're practicing this, Maganda ang environmental performance mo. And towards the end, we're looking at improving your competitiveness. So, so since most of you are first-timers, tinitingnan ko kung ilan yung first time kanina. Uh, you may have attended a seminar na ganito yung title. 
So waste minimization and pollution prevention is uh, from the US EPA or the US United States Environment and Protection Authority. Eco profitability normally pag EU yung country lagi may letter P, so they call it eco profitability. NGO sometimes term it as low non waste technologies. Japan coined this term on zero waste emission. If you go to Japan, they do have what we call industrial complexes where everything or industrial ecology na yung waste ng isang company becomes a raw material of another way. If you're familiar with the Asian Productivity Organization, they call it green productivity. Toyota start, started it out as lean manufacturing, although the history of lean manufacturing really goes back to the 70s. And then, meron pa kayo maririn niya, mga black belt, Six Sigma, those things. These are very much related to recipe. In the end, it's just who's paying for the, who's putting the bill. So yun yung minsan tinatawag natin. So comparing our multimedia transfer of pollution to recipe, yung material balance model, kanina, we're looking at pag end of pipe, meaning paglabas ng waste sa'yo, ano na gagawin natin? We just react and treat it. Kailangan matreat natin so that when we throw it away, safe sa environment at hindi tayo paparusahan ng DNR or ng LLDA if uh, you're dealing with water in the Laguna Lake watershed. But in recipe, what we do really is where is waste coming from and we try to anticipate, anticipate that waste and prevent its generation. So, yun yung first part. So, sabi ko, I think apat yung ating agenda ngayon. So, time check lang po ang sandali, 9.40. So, we now look at yung waste management hierarchy. Well, in this case, eh, yung unang dalawa sa taas is our recipe and yung tatlong nasa baba ay yung ating end of pipe. <coughs> okay. So, if you notice, bakit yung hierarchy is an inverted triangle? Well, inverted siya, sige ba? Pag ganyan, very unstable siya. But the thing is, if you look, in managing your waste, at if you're on top of the hierarchy, you have more options. Habang lumiliit yung triangle, pababa, maabot ka na lang dun sa, itatapon mo na yung waste. So yun na lang yung option mo. And you have to throw it away in a safe manner. Otherwise, pag hindi safe manner, actually may sisingit pa dyan. Remediation. Pag naging sobrang polluted ang uh, like what happened to Pasig River before and even the Iloilo Batiano River system if you're from uh, from Region 6 uh, Panay Island sa Iloilo mismo, Iloilo City. You have to remedy. Kailangan ayusan mo. Ayusin mo. Gastusan mo ng malaki. It's, walang pinagkaiba doon sa ating problema sa Manila Bay. Kung hindi ba naman natin pinulyot yung Manila Bay, hindi na tayo gagastos ng malaki para yung ating uh, linisin natin yung Manila Bay. We really don't have to put those white sand para lang mapaganda siya. So, to implement this waste management hierarchy, particularly source reduction, may mga ilang strategies. So, these are, one, changing your product or changing the process on how you make your product. Changing the product is practically, this would be an example. Uh, my only first hand dito is I have friends who used to work with Nestle and, and Coca-Cola. So in, in the case of Nestle way back, they simply look at the yung gilid nung dito Nesbita, nireduce lang nila yung kung saan sinisil yung product. So they were able to reduce their packaging by 13% in that case. Now, si Coca-Cola naman, although hindi yata ito nag-take off, pero practically the same amount of, of the soda is contained in a 380 gram bottle as opposed to sa 305 grams. So that's already a, a reduction of uh, 75 grams. And uh, if you're familiar with physics, the formula mo ng work is cause force times distance. So if you, you transport 
one na mas magaan over sa mas mabigat over the same distance you get less work done or less yung gagas, gagamitin mong energy doon however sometimes really changing the product would be very very difficult so baka pwede we change our input materials pwede ba yun ang pinasok mo ay manok paglabas ni chum baboy of course hindi naman ganun <clears throat> so let's look at one example. I, I think I have three examples for this. This is a manufacturer of canned lime. So for the Bicolanos natin, lime. Uh, three, I noticed this in my travel all over the country. Sa Bicol po kasi, they eat the leaves. Nung pumunta kami ng Baguio, ang kinakain nila ay yung stock. Pero pumunta ka ng Pampanga, Ang kinakain nila is both the leaves and the stalk. Pero dahil this product was for the Bicol market, nung una, they get the taro leaves, including the stem, delivered to them, nakabundle, and what happens is nasisira yung leaves and then they have to have people who will have to cut off the stem. But, and then the stems become solid waste na kailangan nilang i Although pwede naman siyang i-compose, but in a factory, if you're located within uh, this factory, then was located at the FTI dito sa Taguig. E medyo mahirap yata, so they just send it off to the garbage truck. So what they did was first, although they paid a premium, inaasa nila yung bayad, pero wala na yung stock kasi the stock are now taken out in the farms. So if they would compost the stock, it would really serve the farm. And then they place it in nicely arranged baskets, the 15 kilos. So what happened was from 2.5% rejects, I think wala na sila nire reject So that's one. Another example is a Nata processing company. Nata de Coco, raw Nata, if you're familiar. By the way, just to advertise, kami po sa Environment and Biotechnology Division ng IDBI. Yung kung gumagawa ko kayo ng nata, yung mother liquor, yung starter, we, I think we sell the best inoculant. In fact, may order yata kami from Surigao pa, as far as we go. So yung raw nata, pagkatapos mo niya ng pag-ferment mo niyan, the pH of that raw nata would be about 2.5 to 3. And this company, what they were doing before was if you could see the red and the white, the uh, large large drums ilalagay nila doon yung raw nata let water run continuously in fact originally pa yan 21 hours pero when we told them pwede bang ano bang kailangan yung pH and they wanted to have a pH of 5 can you please monitor this running water and find out at what pH when would pH be reached at the the value of 5 so from 21, they were able to find out na 14 hours lang pala. So that was the first thing that they do. So in 14 hours, as opposed to 21, that's already seven hours of running water. So just imagine that running water is your water being paid for, and then tatapun lang siya, it becomes waste water. So, and then someone from the company said, eh, bakit hindi na lang natin gamitin yung mechanical squeezing so that the supplier would bring it at pH 5. Of course, it's not transferring the responsibility of bringing down the pH 5 uh, by washing it 14 hours the supplier, but rather they place it in what we call a mechanical squeezer. And by mechanical squeezer? Um, sa, dun po sa mga ang hobby ay maglaba at they use a twin tub uh, washing machine, meaning your first tub is your washing machine, and the second tub is your spin dryer. The spin dryer is practically a basket centrifuge. So yun yung mechanical squeezing natin. So you place the raw nata on the spin dryer, let it spin. So what happens is the acidity would now be, by centrifugal force, would now fly off. And then mawawala na yung acidity na yon so they bring in the nata dun sa company and what the company would do is just rehydrate it so by doing this the company was able to save more than 
4,320 cubic meters of water. Yun yung na-reduce nila. And that means also 4,320 cubic meters of wastewater na hindi na na-generate no? ng company. And uh, finally, one of my favorite examples is this company originally based in Camigin, but they've moved to Bulwa in Cagayan de Oro. So if you do have friends who visit Cagayan de Oro, tiyak ang pasalubong sa inyo ay yung tinatawag na pastel di Camigin or ni Bandep. So when they first approach us, ang sabi nila, problema namin, lahat yata ng eggshells sa island ng Camigin ay naging project na ng mga estudyante, pero hanggang madami pa rin siya na-degenerate na eggshell. So, eventually, they realize meron pa lang tinatawag na double yolk egg. Pero, kasi in, in Tagalog, di ba, yung itlog, anong pulay yung tawag, anong tawag natin doon sa gitna niya? Di ba, sabi natin, pula ng itlog, pero pag tingnan mo, it's color yellow. I, I hope you're, you're YouTube view would show it really it's yellow. So, but in the end, by using the double egg yolk, they were able to, uh, they would just be using three double egg yolk instead of five. And it was at the same price. So they already saved 400,000. Uh, 20,000 pesos in a year by doing that. And also, they were able to reduce the amount of eggshells that they had to throw away. So, don't, natapos tayo dun sa input material change. Now, we go into technology change. Technology change could be done in four, four ways. We could maybe change the layout of your facility or we could... Uh, have better process control, or we could just improve the equipment or eventually change the equipment entirely. Bago pa lumaki yung facility ni Vande, they had this layout. And uh, if I may show you, <coughs> uh, kasi in, in some of our small and medium enterprises, they started out small. However, as business continue to increase, nag-expand siya. And during the expansion, maybe to improve businesses, may bagong partner, may loan na nakuha, nag-provide ang DOST ng set-up assistance. This is how the materials flowed at this company. So, I think my, my moderator for this event is a food tech. So, alam niya na pag crisscrossing ay medyo no-no sa food processing. So you could see a lot of crisscross in this bakery. So what was done eventually was we had to change the layout. So with this new layout, ganito na yung naging flow ng materials. Although may konti pang kailangan iayos, but you'll see that there is almost no crisscrossing except for that it crossed that way from the heavy house. So very pang improve, but Actually, they've already changed. They now have a bigger facility, as I mentioned, in Bulwa. So this is changing the layout. Now, let's look at better process control. So process control, and then yung time of processing, yung pH, temperature, pressure, color, and flow rate. Let me just ask you, although hindi ko rin makikita yung sagot niyo, maybe uh, Rose could monitor yung ano yung mga sagot nila. But in the morning, when you wake up, one of the first things that you do is you drink your coffee. So what do you do? If you drink your coffee, you would normally boil your water, get your cup, place maybe your sugar, your coffee, and your creamer. After boiling the water, you now pour the water into your cup and stir your coffee with creamer and sugar. What's the next thing that you do after doing that, after pouring and stirring? The next thing that you would most probably do is, so you drink your coffee immediately. 
not unless you have a tongue of steel you do that most probably you let it go cold di ba palalamigin mo muna alamang inumin mo kaagad eh anong boiling point ng water 100 degrees centigrade so palalamigin mo tingin mo kaya mo ba siya ng 90 degrees 80 70 i i guess uh, Siguro, medyo manhit ng konti yung dila mo. Let's say, 60 degrees centigrade, di inumin mo. Diba? You're wasting a lot of energy bringing the water to boil to one, let's say, room temperature is at 30, you boil it up to 100, so that's 70 degrees temperature rise. But you cool it down to, as I said, 60. So you're practically wasting about 30 well, you do the MCP delta T kung sa physics ninyo. You, 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 you find out how much energy you're wasting. Di ba pwedeng question lang. Again, another question. What do you think would be the best temperature for you to heat up your water? Hanggang anong temperature mo dapat siya i-heat? Ang sirip, kung uh, meron ba sumagot? Kung hindi nyo alam, I think the best temperature at mukhang napag-aralan na is 78 degrees. Again, not endorsing the brand, pero sabi ni Kopi ko, 78. So that means that's at the temperature. Kasi sabi nyo, hindi kaya akong dinubuhay kasi para ba amoy ko yung aroma. But may, may ginawa ng pag-aaral yata, 78 degrees. So you don't really have to bring your water to 100 degrees. So, kailangan konti na lang. So, that's, that's process control. And uh, let's look at some of the application. Ng slightly technical ng konti. So, this is an electroplating uh, shop in Roja City in Capiz. So, they were doing this process where the Capiz shells uh, ilalagay sa parang may metal or may string around it. So, yung, yung metal na yun is being electroplated. So, you do this copper strike, uh, electro clean, copper strike, nickel plating, electro clean, copper strike, nickel plating. So, tingin mo, parang doble doble nga. So, the reason why they're doing this is to make sure that the metals really would come into place, hindi siya matatanggal. But, you bring out your periodic table, look at your electroconductivity series, and looking at that, we ask them to experiment what would be the best. Kasi bakit nag-copper strike nickel ka pa? Baka pwede huwag tanggalin mo na yung nickel plating na sa oras. So the company eventually was able to just increase the copper strike to 15 minutes, thereby eliminating one hour of nickel plating step and doing the, the same thing all over again. Yung the same process yung sa, nasa right side. So that's practically, so kanina, ilang minutes nga yung si copper strike? Five. So, 10. So, practically 50 minutes of less electricity to use in their nickel plating step. And also, if you dip your solute, your item to be plated, that's also eliminating the nickel that you consume for 50 minutes. So, in this case, nagkaroon ng in, nabawasan yung production time mo at the same time, nabawasan yung materials mo sa nickel at yung oriente mo for 50 minutes. So, punta naman tayo sa improve equipment. Although, sa, paano ba naman naging improve yan? Eh, Pangit-pangit na yan. But the thing here is, looking at the schematics na nandun sa bottom right of the slide, yung shifting to a counter current flow winds. And do you know that if, yung kasing nasa kaliwa, how current siya, sabay yung tubig, sa materials in this case naman your your raw materials the materials your plating comes into a counter current flow baka sa lubong although it's an elect electroplating shop sa Las Piñas naman po ito so by doing that you you could check books you could reduce water consumption from co current to counter current by as much as 80 to 90% wala pong pinagkaiba yan sa pag naglalaba kayo. Pag naglalaba kayo, let's say, yung conventional paglalaba nyo, 
nag, may gamit kayong mga timba. Pag nagbabanlaw kayo, you get those three timba. You have uh, your pale one, pale two, pale three. Pag binanlawan mo sa pale one yung, yung damit mo, pag tanggal mo, babanlawan mo sa pale two, tanggalin mo ulit, lagay mo sa pale three, what happens? Yung pale one mo, medyo masabon as compared to sa pales 2 and 3. So darating yung time, masyado nang malabo is si pale 1, what you could now do is you throw out or maybe use it pang buho sa banyo, si pale 1, you move your pale 2 sa place dati ni pale 1, si pale 3 sa place ni pale 2, at si pale 1, lagyan mo ng fresh water. In that case, you could reduce your water consumption by 80 to 90%. So now we look at na improve mo na yung equipment mo. Baka kailangan mo naman palitan na talaga. So one company ay mirroring mirror company in Marikina, dati gamit niya conventional spray gun. The conventional if you done any spray painting, ang nangyayari diyan, mas marami pa yung pinturang lumalagpas sa pipintahan mo kaysa dun sa pumupunta doon sa item na pipintahan mo. So what happens? Ang nangyayari, the overspray, kailangan mo i-collect yon and eventually it becomes a sludge. Okay, you have to dispose of it as hazardous waste. So this company shifted to a high volume, low pressure, meaning hindi masyadong malakas ang buga, mahina lang siya, but enough for it to go to the item you're painting. So, in this case, kung dati ang overspray mo ay 70% at 30% na napupunta sa materials, generally, using the HBLP gun, nababaligtad. Yung 70% mo ng paint napupunta sa item, yung 30% na lang yung overspray. So in this case, the company was able to reduce their paint usage by 50% and also disposing of the sludge that they have to pay for as hazardous waste. At pag hazardous waste, ang disposal niya po ay mas mahal. So, maybe if you, you're a company, you could consider changing from a diesel-fired boiler to an LPG-fired boiler. So that you would, wouldn't want to worry about uh, air pollution. Kasi diesel, in our case, some, our diesel would have some sulfur content and that could be a a major source of your pollution, which causes acid rain. And gusto ko lang example, although matagal na to, no? this is my personal example. I used to drive this white car, pero pinamigay ko na yan, wala na yan dito. And that car used to have a mileage of 6 to 7 in city driving and 8 to 9 pag sa highway driving. And almost every other month, I have to go to the auto repair para pa paayos ko and was spending really a lot. So I did my engineering economics, computed for things. Uh, can I afford this? And with the savings I could get from the maintenance and the savings I could get from the increased mileage, would it be better if I sh shifted to a, a new car way back in 2012? So, nung ko, Everything was fine. So, bihira-bihira na ako pumunta ng auto repair shop. In fact, uh, dahil, well, the good thing about the pandemic, eh, halos dito na po ako, naka, hindi po ako work from home sa pandemic. I, uh, I now live in the office. So, 2012 pa po yung kotse, pero wala pa pong 65,000 kilometers yung kinatakbo na. So, mamaya i- uh, Ipapa-auction ko na lang to sa at the end of the seminar. O ipapapremium natin sa mataas ang sagot sa post, sa post test and pre-test. <clears throat> okay. So, in with the process change, looking at changing what we input or the technology or simply we go into improve operating practices. Ito po yung tinatawag natin GMP, Good Manufacturing Practices. However, way back, Nung unang-unang panahon, dahil nga uh, I have over 30 years of experience, so that would uh, be somehow my age. Ang uh, tawag dito talaga is good housekeeping practices. Pinalitan lang siya ng good manufacturing practices because, well, ginagamit kasi sa manufacturing. But 
originally good housekeeping lang. Maganda pa yung housekeeping. So, what's the reason? Bakit good housekeeping? It's simply because sa bahay, there are things that we want. We want to protect the safety and health of our loved ones. Two, gusto nating makatipid. Three, we want to make things convenient. And if you look at these practices, diba? look at let's say waste segregation diba? you just separate the lata the well in beside yung malata at dili malata so so that you could compost that's on uh, waste segregation the stream segregation ano naman ang application nito sa bahay sa houses natin ang stream segregation is practically pag maglalaba ka hiwalay ang the color sa puti so you do that stream segregation. Ginagamit na pala natin kung hindi lang natin alam. In terms of inventory control, well, kung nag-panic buying ka kahapon, so most probably, di marami kang stock, and then may previous stock ka pa rin. So what do you do in terms of inventory control? So yung ipinanic buying mo kahapon, eh hindi mo na yun yung kakainin mo. Ang kakainin mo muna, yung dati mo ng stock. Because... Of course, in industry, tawag pa nga natin dito ay PIFO or PIFO. First in, first out. Let's look at production scheduling. Kanina naglaba tayo dun sa stream segregation. Pero pag nag-plan siya tayo, we actually do production scheduling. Ano yon? As much as possible, iniipon muna natin yung pa-planchain natin. Kasi ayaw natin araw-araw magpa-plancha ka ng damit mo. And then in the end, ay tataas yung electric consumption mo. So, Nipon muna, let's say one week in lalaban mo, ah, yung paplanchain mo, then you start off with thinner, your thinner materials, panyo lang muna. And then you go hanggang thicker, and then pag matatapos ka na, you go again sa thinner, para mas less yung inyong energy consumption. Although there's a new thing, dahil puro, on, uh, puro online naman tayo, Isipin mo, kailangan po bang planchahin itong polo kong suot ngayon? Halata po bang gusot yung polo ko? Hindi naman. No? So, hindi ko na pa kailangan planchahin. And uh, that's saving the earth. So, let's go into materials handling. So, materials handling, no, pag kumakain tayo, what do we do? Pag may ulam tayo sa gitna ng table, we use serving spoons or serving forks or whatever. Kasi, to make sure na hindi may spoil yung items na ating kakainin. Training. Kung may bago kang kasang bahay, what do you do? Tintrain mo siya, tinuturo mo ano yung gagawin. Paano yung mga gagawin. And then, uh, cost accounting principles. Of course, nga, yung ginawa ko dun sa pag-decision de, pag on whether to change my car or what, I did some cost accounting practices doon. So now let's go into some of our real world experiences on this one. So this is a crab meat processing company in Manapla, Negros Occidental. Pero lumipat na daw yata sila, hindi ko na maalala kung saan sila lumipat. So if you look at the picture on the left, you'd see on the floor are crab meat. So yung crab meat is their product. So and what they were doing then was they splash this crab meat go using a pail, a 40 liter pail of water, isang splash ang maubos siya. And that would really cause some problems. Kasi when they first approach us, sabi nila, can you construct or design a wastewater treatment plant for us? Ang dali lang po, painom lang. <clears throat> so, diba? you can just imagine that crab meat is their product and uh, it goes to the drain causing pollution which has to be treated. So, the first thing we asked of them was, hindi po muna kami mag-design. Let's look at how you do things in your company. True enough, one of the things we realized is medyo hindi maganda yung pag pagtawag natin crab picking. So, kasi in crab picking, what happens is you get your crab, kung sanay kang kumain talaga ng crab, you break it, tapos they, they have a parang stick. 
Ayan, di yata makita sa screen ng aking stick. So you have that stick, tapos i-pick mo yung crab. So, the first recommendation bago yung nasa kanan was to find out who was very fast and uh, very efficient less yung spillage. And they found one, so they videotape that person and use that as a training tool for their staff. And guess what? Ano kaya ang dating trabaho nitong taong nito? Pahulain ko lang. Rose! I'd like to hear your voice muna. Ano sa tingin mo ang trabaho niya? Nagalinis, sir. Nang? Nang floor. Hindi. Eh. Sa'yo na sana yung kotse, <laughs> pero mali yung sagot mo. <laughs> ang tama pong sagot ay dati po siyang manipurista. So, kaya siya magaling palang magtanggal kasi pag nagtatanggal siya ng cuticle, magaling siya. So, that was the... Uh, the work of this person. And it, this is a real case. No? Hindi, hindi po ito imagination. So that's Sir, the may first... nakasagot sa participants. Meron ba? Sa, oh, ano? po. Si ah. Sir Raymond Diaz, manicure po ang sabi niya. Okay, kaso hindi ako nangakop sa kanya ko ibibigay yung... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Raymond D... ano? Diaz. Yes, oh. sir. Opo. Sige, mag-apply ka sa akin. Uh, graduate ka na ba? <laughs> Okay, so the, the next thing was, siyempre, meron pa rin namang tumatapon. By the way, in, in everything we do, meron tayong tinatawag na avoidable waste saka unavoidable waste. Ano po yung avoid, unavoidable waste? Pagkakain tayo ng saging, yung balat po ng saging is an unavoidable waste. Kasi not unless kumakain ka talaga ng balat ng saging. But, but the thing is, that uh, the skin or the peel, you peel the banana, yung peelings po, yun po yung waste. So, and you cannot avoid that. However, kung yung banana ay nalamog, uh, well, uh, ewan ko, uh, Tagalog yata yun. Unfortunately, oh, pasensya na po doon sa ibang mga non-Tagalog speakers kasi po ako'y purong Tagalog. I was born, raised, and still working in Tagig, the home of the Tipas Opia Bakery. So yung pag nalamog yung banana, yung portion na yun, normally hindi mo kakainin. Or minsan, ayaw mo nang kainin yung the entire banana. However, bakit siya na-spoil? Na is because maybe of some cost handling or even pinabayaan mo yung saging. So, but it could have been avoided. So in this case, uh, although avoidable, unavoid, uh, avoidable pa rin yung ibang... Uh, natatapon, unfortunately, hindi pala ganun ka-perfect. So, meron pa rin konti. So, in this case, yung SQG, ginamit nila. Ano ba yung SQG? Well, kung may kotse po kayo, yung wiper po, parang yung wiper sa harapan ng kotse. That's a rubber. So, they spend, uh, I think, less than a thousand for this. And then, they would do first a dry cleaning. Ipunin muna siya. In fact, pag naipun mo siya, pwede pa siya ng well, hindi mo naman ilalata at magiging class B, but rather it could be part of, let's say, animal feeds. And then, uh, that's the time they would use water na may hose na ito naman ay high pressure, low volume. Na parang nasa car wash. So, and we did other intervention dun sa companies, and in the end, they were able to reduce their water consumption by 15%. Hindi lang po yun, 15% na yun. But rather, they also have to chlorinate the water. So yung chlorinating, pag-chlorinate po nun, nabawasan din yung consumption nila sa chlorine. And they were able to reduce their pollution load by 82%. Balik lang tayo dyan. And you know what? When they initially approach us, design and construction ng wastewater treatment plant. And with all the interventions na ginawa na natin sa kanila, they did not need to set up a wastewater treatment plant. Imagine yun. It could have cost them at about a million pesos to build the wastewater treatment plant. And naging investment in SPG, 1,000 pesos. Mahal pa yun. Now, other management practices is like posting signages. Uh, when you post signages, ano yung... 
may study, there's a study, I can't recall uh, who made that study, pero minsan, pagka nakasot daw, halimbawa, may t-shirt ka, nakalagay sa t-shirt mo, I turn off the light when no one is using it. Di ba para kang obligado? Although, yung nakikita natin, yung minsan yung mga traffic enforcer, na sila pa yung walang helmet doon sa pag uh, nag uh, sila ng mga. But, uh, Generally, if you, you conserve water, conserve, or are you water efficient or energy efficient, you do that. You turn off the lights when no one is in the room, etc. And the other thing, part ng inventory control, yung FIFO. And in this case, this is the same electroplating company in Las Piñas. Dati, uh, when they dispense their chemicals, they would have a 10% excess. So, pag humingi, let's say, ng 100 grams ng, let's say, copper sulfate, yung empleyado, ang i-issue nila, 110 grams. Pero sabi namin, subukan nyo nga mag-issue ng eksaktong 100 grams. Tingnan natin kung babalik. You know what? Wala namang bumalik to, to ask for the additional. So, clearly, they were excessively using their chemicals. So this company was able to reduce yung liquid chemicals nila by 2.4 cubic meters per year and yung solid chemicals by 7 tons a year. Just imagine how much could that cost. Now, the next thing na pwede rin gawin, simply lang, is you implement your 5S. Uh, galing sa Hapon, Seiri, Seiton, Seiso, Suketsu, Sitsuke. Although I will not teach everything dito, I just give one example, yung Seiton. Uh, set in place. So let's say you have this drum na kalagay dyan. And that drum, may kumuha. Pag may kumuha doon, malay ko kung may drum ba dyan dati o wala. So it's not obvious that the drum is missing. So, ang ginagawa natin ay lagyan natin ng marka. So, pag nilagyan natin ng marka, pag may kumuha ng drum, ay may nawawala. Kaso hindi natin alam na drum pala yung nawawala. So, the next best thing that you could do is maybe lagyan mo ng address at kung sino yung nakatira doon. So, so that if you take out that drum, you will be able to return it dun sa proper space. Why do we do this? Na experience niyo na ba minsan na may ka, may gamit ka na kailangan ngayon pero hindi mo makita. Pero sabi mo sa sarili mo, kanina lang nandito yun eh. But ngayon hindi ko makita. So that is kasi hindi mo sineset in place. Although of course minsan nasa na kaya yung salamin ko yung makita yung pala hindi mo sabit ng set. So 5S really is like in terms of cleaning, tingnan natin itong uh, transmission na to. So, corroded na siya, maraming oil, pero hindi mo alam saan nang nagli-leak. And if you simply clean that, it would be very obvious, kung mag-leak man siya, alam mo kung saan mo siya hanapin. Practically, 5S is a visual control. Parang... I would suggest if you would want to rearrange your room, yung mga estudyante na nandito, iusin nyo yung room nyo. Pero bago nyo ayusin, picturean ninyo. Para makita nyo yung improvement. Para pag kinumpere nyo, oy, oo nga, no? mas maganda. So, similarly, nililinis lang to. Simple lang. Uh, this is a burner. Nung hindi nililinis, it emits yellow flame. What is yellow flame? It's a sign or an indication of incomplete combustion. So, nung nilinis, blue flame na rin siya. So, that means medyo mas complete na yung combustion. So, kasi pag incomplete, you're practically wasting your fuel. You're not getting enough of the heat that you wanted to get from it. So, very important din talaga yung preventive maintenance. Wag yung Hintayin natin masira, saka natin naayusin. Let's make sure that we do this PM. Already I've mentioned about stream and waste segregation. Um, 
In some cases kasi yung yung storm drain ay kasama nung sewer line. So kung meron po kayong sa bahay may septic tank kayo, tapos yung alulod nyo papunta rin sa septic tank, that would be a very bad thing. Kasi ang mangyayari po, yung microbio na dating kumakain ng pulyotant ninyo, yung galing sa CR ninyo doon, ay mawawash out pagka umulan ng malakas. So, and then, siguro another thing about this is about training. Yung training po, ang ginagawa natin, we only don't tell people what to do. But more importantly, we tell them why they are doing such. Importante po yung bucket. Kasi normally, pag hindi nila alam kung bakit nila kailangan gawin, ay they would skip some steps. Ito rin po yung the same electroplating shop I mentioned earlier. Meron po kasing step doon na ang step niya is after pickling, kasi yung, yung pong metals na ito-plate natin, generally, hindi natin nakikita, mayroong film po ng oxide. Ano yung film of oxide? It's actually kalawang, pero film lang siya. So, kasi pag naging electroplating ka at nandun yung film na yun, hindi po kakapit yung plating solution natin doon. So what happens is you dip that in a pickling tank. Pagka dip mo, mas strip off yung, yung kalawang na yun, yung film na yun, and then you rinse it in water tanks. Ito pong company to, alam nila, ganun yung step. But they did not know why they were doing it. So nangyayari, they pickle it, rinse, rinse in three baths, tapos iahang nila yung, yung item na kanilang pinikel at nirinse. What happens? Try to get a nail, pako. Muha po kayo ng pako, i-dip niyo po sa tubig. Yung bagong-bagong pako, i-dip niyo po sa tubig, tapos tanggalin niyo, ilagay niyo lang sa sa isang table. You'll notice that in a few minutes, nagkakalawang na siya. So, nangyari doon, nag-pickle, rinse, rinse, rinse. In the end, pinahinang lang nila for more than one hour. So, yung film po doon ay nag-build up na ulit. So, it's very important na alam nila kaya ka nagpipikil at nagre-rinse is para matanggal yung oxide na yun. So kung hindi mo pa pala siya isasalang sa next step, huwag mo munang siyang gawin. So at least alam na nila ngayon. Like kayo mga bata, pag sinabi ng mga magulang ninyo na umuwi kayo ng maga, ano ginagawa niyo? Umuwi kayo ng umaga. Kasi may curfew na. But, but the thing is, uh, kaya kayo pinauwi ng maga, is that they worry about you. Okay, so yung on-site recycling at saka source reduction, yun po yung cleaner production natin, uh, resource efficient and cleaner production. Although on-site and off-site recycling ay recycling pa rin, pero yung normally yung on-site is yung first two dito, recycling, when we say we reuse. So if you have, uh, wala nga pang sample, hopefully makikita sa background ko, paper. So yung paper, may print na siya rito, kung i-reuse mo, you use, reuse it kung ano yung original purpose niya. So, kung pag mag-print ka doon, print ka doon ulit or susulatan mo. That's reusing it. Using it naman is originally print media mo siya, pero gagawin mo na siyang aeroplano. So, that is your using it. So, like, uh, yung bote, yung bote, lalag, uh, dati may laman na uh, May laman, tapos lalagyan mo ulit ng tubig. However, kung release mo, gagawin mo naman siyang lalagyan ng mga halaman uh, para sa mga plantito and plantitas. Now, yung third reclamation, meaning, balik lang tayo sa sample ng paper, you actually, paper is made up of fibers. Yung fibers na yun, nire-reclaim sa isang paper mill ulit para gawin ulit paper. Or in this case, yung PET natin, they reclaim the polymer dito and what happens is they are converted into polyester na nagiging jacket natin or mga sapatos. Time check. Hindi ako pinag-break ng rush. Pero matatapos na tayo. Okay, so... 
a sample of on-site recycling uh, where we used a the pili shells in uh, in Naga. Yeah, this is a uh, first. Pag sinabi mong pili sa sa Bicol yan. At pag sinabi mong saan maraming gumagawa ng mga pili nuts na mga sweets ay sa bandang Kamsur yan. Pero ang pagkakaalam ko, most of the pili nuts ay galing sa Sorsogon. Pero Bicol pa rin. So they use the pili shells na dati pinatapon lang nila at uh, as basura. So we do have our technology at ITDI, tinatawag namin combustor, na in the end, para rin po siyang LPG ang, ang buga. So in this case, they were able to save uh, yung LPG nila and reduce also the amount of waste that they have to, to throw away. So uh, recipe actually is looking at how do we increase our productivity towards reducing the waste we generate? Okay. So just to complete our waste management hierarchy, although in this part ng resource efficient and cleaner production or ng recipe, but we do still recommend that if you have some residual waste, then this has to be treated to change either its form and or its composition para ma-eliminate natin or matanggal natin yung pollutant na nandun. Uh, of course, uh, although not part of our discussion today, pero you, you may have some your wastewater treatment, you will have your air pollution control and those things. Now, finally, kahit treated mo na siya, make sure that you dispose of it properly. So, uh, it's either kung hazardous waste siya, may covered siya ng RA6969, na dapat meron kang DNR recognized treater, transporter, treater, and storage and disposal facility for that. Uh, and then, for the solid waste naman natin, Ang final disposal po ng ating uh, solid waste, whether it's industrial or municipal, is yung tinatawag na sanitary landfill. And even if you have that sanitary landfill, yung case ni pong nandiyan sa picture, you make sure na one, walang leachate na lalabas para makontaminate yung, yung groundwater. And para ma-ensure na hindi siya nakontaminate, we do have monitoring wells dyan. And then kung may leachate pa dyan, Iniipon po yan at initreat sa isang uh, leachate treatment system. At tapos po, dahil po yan, mga decaying materials natin dyan ay anaerobic. Ang nangyayari ay kailangan naman may methane capture. Uh, pero hindi na, will not go into details of that. Pero kung uh, mamaya, kung may time pa tayo sa question and answer, kung may mga gusto kayong itanong about this uh, Willing po si Rose na sagutin lahat yan. So, now let's look at, so, pinag-usapan na natin ano yung si recipe, ano yung concepts and uh, philosophy behind that, and look at how are this being implemented through the waste management hierarchy. So, yung mga pinag implement namin, we look at, sinabi namin yung sustainability, we look at what would the features, bakit nag-participate itong mga companies na ito sa amin. <coughs> Number one, of course, top management was committed. If you get to talk to the, the uh, founder of Van Depp, really, he was very much committed in improving the things. And he really learned a lot. Yung, yung example to do sa electroplating, yung counter current flow rinsing, he took the concept and applied it to his washing of the dishes of his is utensils. So in the end, nakasave pa siya rin ng tubig doon. So top management commitment is number one. Second, pero hindi si top management ang nag-generate ng waste. It would be your workers. So they have to be strongly motivated. Baka naman nakakasave yung management tapos hindi pinabahagi ito sa workers. Medyo hindi yata maganda yon. So th this has to be shared. So again, the, the, the Van Depp owner, 
kung anumang benefits na ako niya, sinishare niya doon sa mga kanyang empleyado. And then, you can look at the technologies that I've shared. Hindi po siya rocket science. These are very small and simple things. In SVG, kahit sino, kaya siguro mag-design. Hindi mo kailangan ng, uh, ng engineering degree to, to do that. And then finally, kasi immediately na-realize niyo yung benefit. So na-reduce yung gastos nila, na-reduce yung waste nila, nag-increase yung profitability nila. And then from the worker side, when we did some uh, relay outing of facilities, hindi lang po yung pebang depth. The same electroplating shop, we did some relay outing. Nakita ng workers, oy, mas gumaan yung trabaho namin. So that's why they were motivated to, to implement this. And how is this program being done? It's being done through this series of steps. Tinanong ako kanina ni Rose, mga ilang minutes ba ako mag-discuss? I could discuss this forever for five, five, uh, five days kung gusto nyo. However, uh, kung gusto nyo habang, habang ECQ yung Metro Manila, i-discuss natin ito hanggang August 20. I could really... Sabi naman, masyado naman. So, these are the steps again, but I won't be discussing the details. Uh, so, ang critical lang dito po ay Rose, can I have a few minute break muna? Sige po, sir. Sige, ah. Sandali lang. Okay, so we will have a short break for a while. So, para po sa ating speaker. Okay, so siguro po mga three-minute break. Okay, so before uh, we continue po, so i-remind -re ko lang po kayo no, na yun po mga hindi nakapag-take ng pre-test. So, just ensure lang po na makapag-take kayo ng post-test and evaluation form for uh, after the session. Also, if you have any questions, you can drop it down na po sa ating chat box and we will read it later for Sir Ray to answer after the session. And also, uh, nagtatanong po si CSTC Davao. So, pwede po bang makapag-engage for CP Consultancy Services for our setup cooperators in Region 11? Pwedeng-pwede po, uh, Sir or Ma'am. So, actually, you can just... Um, uh, send us a letter through our uh, director, Dr. Annabel Vibriones, for any technical concerns or needs or assistance that you uh, need po or yung inyo pong mga na-identify na kailangan po ng assistance ni DOST ITDI. So we're very much willing to help naman po. Okay, so... Thank you so much po sa mga humabol. Ngayon po ay tayo ay 282 watching now. So I think may mga na disconnect kasi umaakyat bumababa yung ating numbers. Okay, so but thank you very much for attending this webinar. So this will be aired for 48 hours po. And then uh, yung ating post-test po and evaluation will be given until August Nine. So for 48 hours, so bali po, uh, ito ay tomorrow and then on Sunday. So hanggang Sunday po, mapapanood nyo ang itong webinar na ito. So you can review kung medyo nabilisan po kayo sa presentation kanina ni Sir Ray or may mga gusto kayong balikan, you can still view this po. Same link po tayo. And then we will uh, resume na lang po yung amin pong batch 2 sa mga hindi po nakaregister by October. So, i -re repost po namin ito publicly and then we will give one week para po makapag-take ng assessment test din po yung mga hindi po nakapag-register at this time. Okay. So, Sir Ray, just prompt me if you're okay na po. Alright. So, ready na po ulit ang ating speaker. So, I will turn you over to our speaker again. Thank you. Thank you, Rose, for holding the fort. Legacy. <laughs> Uh, work from home, halos lahat ng tao sa office. So I'm the only one left dun sa office. Eh, ring na rin yung phone na yung repeat lang <laughs> So I had to answer. Tapos pag sagot mo, uh, ano pong local ni ganun? <laughs> but uh, kasi we're in the government service, kailangan natin uh, sagutin lahat. So now let's proceed. So ang uh, critical po dito sa recipe program ay itong detailed assessment. 
That's a like cool feature. Okay. So, this is, kailangan nating malaman ano ba yung waste natin, saan siya nanggagaling, gano'n siya karami, at more importantly, bakit siya may waste and paano natin siya isosolve. So, I'll just skip through the other slides. Uh, pero hindi ko alam kasi si Rose yung kumuha nung questions eh. Baka dito niya pinull out. But let me just go into, sabi nga, ito yung uh, critical. Uh, kasi ano ba yung waste natin? Is it water? Is it electricity? Is it our raw materials? Is it our finished products? And then, kailangan natin, eh, gano'n ba siya karami? Of course, uh, towards the end, you might want to look at ano ba ang uh, ipaprioritize mo. Kasi definitely, maraming waste ka nag-generate. Pero ano yung ipaprioritize mo? And uh, once you prioritize uh, by knowing how much it is, then you would look at saan ba siya mga nanggagaling at yung critical itong why. So that's... Uh, and uh, one way of doing these things na ginagawa namin is we develop what we call a a material balance, material and energy balance in some cases. Para alam natin, ano ba yung mga pumapasok, ano yung lumalabas, ano yung nare-recycle. Simple lang yan, eh. what goes in uh, must come out. Otherwise, kung what goes in, tapos konti yung out, magkakaroon tayo ng accumulation. But itong pandemic, kung nasa bahay ka lang lagi, work from home ka, tapos kain ka ng kain, hindi ka nag-exercise, tapos magtataka ka, bakit ako tumataba? Diba? Kasi nga, masyado marami yung in, konti yung out, so may kakaroon na accumulation. So, now, in doing the assessments, uh, some of the things that it would be important is, ano yung mga tools na pwede natin gawin? So, I've discussed, I think, uh, ito yung una, yung uh, 5W2H approach. If you're an industrial engineer or you're an industrial engineering student, you would be very familiar with most of these tools. So, yeah. Pero although sinabi natin, saan nang gagaling yung waste, pero we also identify sino ba yung mga taong involved. So, the first things. So, just to guide you, what is being done, ano yung ginagawa? Let's say, yung electroplating. Nagpipikling sila. Sino yung gumagawa nun, yung taong doon? Bakit niya ginagawa yun? Kasi ang pagkakaalam niya, pickle, rinse, 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 tapos sabi Kailan siya ginagawa before yung isang plating step? How is, is it done? Ayun, yun yung may mali. And mukhang dahil sa pagkakabaling yun, we are spending so much. Another way of identifying ano yung pwede mo i-prioritize is doing a check sheet. So like in this case, it's a printing shop. So nakikita mo saan lagi may, ano yung maraming defects. At kailan, anong oras nangyayari yung maraming defects. I used to work in a cement plant and nakikita ko, mas marami kami may problema during change shifts. So, pagka ganun, mukhang yun yung kailangan ma-resolve. And uh, you could also plot yung kanina nasa check sheets into a, a diagram na kagaya nito. It, but in the end, uh, we apply the Pareto rule, 80-20 rule or 80-20 rule. Kasi si Pareto was an Italian uh, politician. Sabi niya, 80% of the wealth in Italy was, con was controlled by only 20% of the population. Baka sa atin yan, 99-1 yung rule. <coughs> so, it's just like you go to your home. Tatayo sa bahay-bahay ninyo. Let's talk about water consumption. Saan pinakamalaki ang water consumption ninyo? Diba? Typically, it's either sa paglalaba at sa... I, I would presume, pinakamalaki ang water consumption natin sa paglalaba. So, if you're going to... Would want, although, paglalaba is maybe one-seventh of your activity. You do it only once in a week. So, but if you would want to significantly reduce your water consumption, then maybe you could focus on how you do your laundry. So another way of finding out what's wrong is doing an echo map. So meron kang, uh, you, you have a floor plan of your facility. Tinitingnan mo, saan ba maraming generation ng 
water waste, solid waste, air, fugitive air emissions, and those things. So those are ways of identifying an new problem. Now, to find solutions is we assess. And one very, very effective tool and which we've been normally using, and uh, even in our QMS ISO 9001, series of 2015 certification is using, using the cause and effect diagram or the fishbone diagram or the Ishikawa diagram. Wherein what you do is look at all the improvements not hindi lang five yung tinik ng isda. You use the head as the, the statement of the problem and you look at the different major bones as the the activities that you, you're doing and find out. Like in this case, pag nakita mo yung dulo na at hindi mo na masagot, yun ang ating uh, problema. Uh, doing a fishbone diagram is very much similar to an iterative why step or process. Meaning you continue asking why, bucket, bucket. It's just like if you have a four-year-old child, I think may meron dito in two years magkakaroon siya ng four-year-old child. Nako, ang four-year-old mong anak or pamangkin would be doing. Pag sinagot mo, tatanong ulit niya, bakit? Tapos, pag sagot mo, tatanong na naman niya, bakit? So, pag yun na, hindi tayo pwedeng lumabas eh. Bakit? Eh, may COVID. Eh, bakit? Kasi, pinabayaan natin yung makapasok dito eh. Eh, bakit? So, you only stop answering yung bucket pag dumating ka na sa dulo. Either you run out of answers or you run out of patience. Pero sana wag yung, wag yung latter. Similarly, in this case, sabi ko, Ma'am Rose, ang sakit ng ulo ko. So, sabi ni Ma'am Rose, ay madali po yan. Bumili kayo ng paracetamol. So, on top sa... Drugstore, bilay kong paracetamol. Unfortunately, wala rin akong tubig pang inom. So, bumili pa ako ng bottled water. Tapos, I took the, the medicine. Tapos, after a few minutes, sabi ko kay Ma'am Rose, lalo yatang sumakit ang ulo ko. Nung tinanong ako, eh bakit ba masakit ang ulo mo? Eh, paano wala na akong pera, yung natitira akong pera, na ipambili ko pa ng paracetamol at tubig. So, ang nangyari, it, re, it eventually worsened the situation. The thing is, we really have to go to the root cause of the problem to solve that problem. So, yun po yung ginagawa natin sa recipe. So, finally, let me share to you, ano po yung impact ng mga naging assistance natin sa mga companies uh, when we were implementing our uh, integrated program and cleaner production some time ago. So, mayroon po kami mga success stories na pinublish. In fact, one, yung, yung kanan, yun yung pinublish namin locally. And yung nasa kaliwa, yung OCP was published in an APEC publication. And we document ano ba yung background ng company, ano yung mga options, ano yung reductions and everything. We even computed for the savings in input materials, the reduction in waste, the increase in productivity of uh, some of the 46 companies na nabalikan namin. And you know what? Uh, if you talk of, uh, so you'll see on the left, in, uh, this will be in quantities, pero nung we converted this into value, the total savings in uh, savings and increase in productivity amounted to 43 more than 43 million tapos hindi na sila kailangan magtayo pa ng wastewater treatment plant for some companies na almost 2.5 million and the program cost DOST only about 37.5 million in 6 years so you could just imagine yung government nag-spend ng 37.5 million Pero isang uh, one-time, big time lang yun, yun yung uh, in-spend ng program for six years. But the companies assisted were having savings of 43 million per annum. So pag kinumpute mo yung simple payback niyan, in less than a year, yung uh, 37.5 million ay nabawit na ng gobyerno. 
And then we did have an assistance from ISET. So ito naman yung naging uh, results namin sa kanya o kung naging companies. Ito yung mga reductions niya. So, eh, meron pang, eh, paano yun? Meron pang sinasabi mga quality, food safety, worker safety, energy efficiency. So yung recipe is actually magkakamag-anak to eh, magpipinsan. If you're talking of... Uh, energy efficiency, ITDI has this energy audit group. Um, and then we also have our food safety team. But eventually, if you go down the, the table, kung gusto mo mag-certify, uh, these are the systems. Ito yung mga foundation ng systems na pwede mo gawin. Now, uh, i-advertise ko na rin para dun sa sa ibang hindi taga DOST at uh, dahil nga nakikinig din yung ating uh, mga friends sa regions, uh, DOST has this small enterprise technology upgrade wherein in some cases, some of our regions, ginamit din nila yung uh, outputs ng cleaner production or ng recipe in uh, providing this, uh, the assistance on setup. In fact, uh, part of the setup, may nakita na, may nasilip ako kanina about a question o pwede ba nating simulan doon sa region yung advice o consultancy service on on cleaner production. So, maybe may later i-sagutin natin yung tanong na yun. So, uh, one of the outputs uh, of uh, the program is we come up with a recipe assessment report. And you know, that report documents what's happening in, in most of our SMPs. And what we found out was Minsan yung SMEs natin, wala silang proper document, documentation ng kanilang mga processes. Uh, ang nangyayari, uh, hindi standardized yung paggawa nila. Parang adobo lang yan, no? hindi standardized yung paggawa ng adobo. Of course, you may have your own version of, of doing the adobo. Pero the, the thing is, if nakadocument yung recipe mo, madali siyang ulitin. Similarly, if uh, the processes in your facility is documented, kahit mawala yung isang tao, it would be easier for someone who would be taking over to, to follow some, uh, some steps. So, ngayon, just to put up some challenges, meron ba kayo naisip na mga ideas na green uh, on how what you can do sa offices nyo, sa factory nyo, or even sa bahay nyo, yung mga estudyante, how can you, hindi porke binibigyan kayo ng baon, may baon pa ba kayo ngayon pagka nasa bahay lang kayo nagkaklase? Pero, although mapapansin, pag nagtrabaho na kayo, mga estudyante, ma, ma, you would soon realize na nung nag-aaral pa kayo, buti nung nag-aaral may pera kayo, pag, pero pag may trabaho na kayo, lagi kayo mga pera. Uh, again, what ideas can you think of na pwede nyo immediately gawin sa, sa bahay, sa opisina, sa eskwelahan ninyo. And given those ideas, paano nyo ipuporso yun? And uh, paano, anong gagawin nyo para ma-implement yun? So, just to complete, and just to relate these things dun sa tinatawag nating naririnig nyo siguro na yung circular economy, let's talk about some people, mga prime movers nito. Uh, of course, a lot of you would be familiar with Greta Thunberg in 2019. Pero even before that, may nauna sa kanyang isang teenager, a Japanese uh, Canadian teenager, na she was already pushing for this. And sa Philippines, may isang Cebuano, si Antonio Oposa, na he filed a case against the Philippine government on behalf of the future generation. You know what? Nanalo siya. The reason why there's this continuing mandamus sa uh, Manila Bay was because of him. He sued, I think, 13 government agencies hindi kasama ang DOST because they were not doing their job to make sure that Manila Bay is taken care of. So, ang, uh, yung circular economy, actually, nung una, this is how we were doing things. We extract resources, we produce, we distribute it, we consume, and then we throw away our waste. So ngayon, medyo quasi materials flow, quasi circular niya or pipe 2, wherein uh, we extract limited uh, energy and resources and we throw away 
limited ways. So ang ideal is looking at a circular economy wherein wala na tayong masyad, wala na tayong ikukunin sa earth at wala rin tayong itatapon sa earth. So that, that's the ideal situation. And uh, talking of sustainability, hindi lang po protecting the environment ang sustainability. But of course, hindi rin lang making sure that we do develop doon sa sustainability. But also, hindi lang po yung economy ang dapat mag-develop, but also the social, even the people should also develop. So, may, meron tayong tinatawag na 2030 Sustainable uh, Development Goals or SDGs and uh, most of what I'm discussing would fall under item 12 in re Responsible Consumption and Production. They sabi nung iba, di ba? We're up for ban plastics, ban single-use plastics. Pero bakit ba? Why are we shouting for ban the plastics when in fact, inanimate objects si plastic? Hindi po siya lumangoy papuntang dagat. Meron pong tao na nagtapon para siya makarating sa dagat. Siguro we really have to be responsible in, uh, in consuming. Kasi aside from uh, single-use product uh, plastics na napupunta sa dagat, Ano yung mga bagong nag-discover sa dagat? Face mask. So ano, dahil may face mask sa dagat, iban din natin ang face mask. So we really do have to find ways of uh, of making uh, particularly item 12 under what I'm discussing uh, a reality. So uh, as a final word, I leave to you a statement by a former U.S. Senator, Sir Richard Lam, na sabi niya, it is not enough for a nation to have a handful of heroes. Hindi po lang yan tayong 200, ilan na tayo? 266 na nandito sa YouTube. Hindi lang po tayo 200. Dapat isang buong generation. Generations. So, kaming mga senior citizens, Yung mga millennials. Ano ba yung susunod sa millennials? Gen Z na ba yun? So with that, maraming salamat po. And, uh, and hope uh, to answer your questions after this. Thank you po. All right. So thank you, Sir Ray, for that comprehensive discussion on recipe. Okay. So now we know how to make our resources efficient and how to make our production clean. Okay, so thereby we reduce our waste and of course conserve our energy and save the planet. So as per Sir Ray nga, ang sustainability is not only about the environment but it's also about social and economic sustainability. So and uh, napakaganda ng discussion ni Sir Ray about the circular economy ano na Dire-diretso na tayo, wala tayong itatapon at wala tayong kukunin sa earth. So, di ba po? Okay. okay, so here are our contact details. If you have any technical concerns, assistance needed, or training, just uh, email us po sa ITDI Technological Services Division. Of course, uh, your letter should be addressed to our director, Dr. Annabel V. Briones. So, our chief po is Ms. Nelia Elisa Florendo. You can call us at these numbers. And also, you can uh, just email us at tsd at itdi.dost.gov.ph and tsd underscore training at itdi.dost.gov.ph. So for other concerns po or other technical needs specific for the Environment and Biotechnology Division, you can contact directly our EBD at 8837-2071, local 2185, and there. Uh, email po is ebd at itdi.dost.gov.ph Meron din pong Facebook page ang EBD So just look for Environment and Biotechnology Division So doon po yung mga ads din po nila about uh, different technologies on, env on environment and biotechnology Okay, so at this point po I, close, I would like close, uh, Yes sir Kasi uh, we're, we're seen nationwide Siguro ilagay yes, natin yung area code 02 kung sa ating mga look. Ay, okay uh, po, sir. 02 po ang aming uh, area code. 
All right. So thank you for that, sir. Ayun po. So 02 8837 Yan po ang aming trunk line. Okay. So thank you so much for that, sir. Again, so we would just like to thank everyone who participated today and also for Engineer Rate uh, is, uh, for being our resource speaker for today. So without you, of course, this will not be possible. And of course, in behalf of the whole ITDI community, we would like to thank you for uh, spending your time today with us for this two hour or actually magi 11 30 na no, two and a half hour uh, webinar. So again, see you po on our next webinar. So stay tuned to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So thank you po, Sir Ray. Salamat po at ingat po tayo. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye po.